Hey everyone, it's Tutorial Tuesday and today we're going to build something pretty simple, pretty small, uh, but it's going to allow us to take a look at a few different features of Adobe Muse that are useful, useful in this situation and useful in many other situations. And what this is that we're building today is a back to top button that appears as we scroll down. It's not there all the time, it's only there once we've scrolled past a certain point which we get to decide and uh, that remains pinned to the side of the browser so no matter how big my window is no matter how short it is how wide it is uh, etc it remains available on the right hand side you could put it on the left hand side totally up to you uh, but we just want to make sure that it can't accidentally hang off the bottom which it doesn't it automatically scoots up when the bottom of the window scoots up and most importantly when you click on it, it brings you back to the top so let's take a look at how to make that it's pretty easy we just have a few steps to do so I'm going to go over to the blank version of this template here. And I've got a little side note, because uh, in a previous tutorial, I visited one of these new built-in templates that are built into Adobe Muse CC, as long as you've got the 2015 update installed. And uh, a lot of you said, I don't get that welcome screen. There's a welcome screen that appears uh, when I open up Adobe Muse. But uh, many of you have clicked the Do Not Show Again checkbox. And uh, what do you know? It does not show it again when you check that box. Uh, so in short, it's your fault it's not coming up, but I'll show you guys how to get it back. You just go to Help, and there's a Welcome button under Help. When you do so, you get the Welcome window, you get the Starter Designs, which are on the Create tab. There are a few tabs across the top. And at the bottom, it says Do Not Show Welcome Screen Again, which many of you have already checked. Uh, you may have checked that screen before there was useful stuff here, if you've been using Muse long enough. Uh, if we check it now, it does say Accessible under Help, Welcome that appears briefly and then disappears but it just reiterates what I've told you here so I'm using this exposure template if you guys want to follow along and use the same template I am that is where I started with that exposure uh, template so here we go so now that I've got it open I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom of it I'm gonna go to the bottom right and what I want to be able to see is the very bottom of the page and the right edge of the page where it goes from white to gray now technically the page ends here at this guide uh, this space between the edge of the page and the edge of our design area or our canvas in Muse represents the browser. That's, that's the browser uh, that can be made larger or smaller by the viewer. So normally, I mean, you can fill this with a color, uh, you can fill the browser with a pattern, a design, an image, whatever you want. We're not going to be filling the browser, but it's important to know that this edge represents the edge of the browser because we're about to create something and pin it relative to the edge of the browser and uh, that means we have to position it relative to this edge right here so what we're gonna do now is create a text box I'm just gonna go to the T on the toolbar here and I'm gonna create a small little text box the size of the button that I wanna make so I'm just gonna make it small like that 56 by 28 for those of you who care and now that I've got that established I'm gonna do shift 6 to give me that little up caret symbol and I'm gonna write top all caps uh, and I'm, I'm going to do this with one element. I'm only going to use this text box. I'm going to fill the text box and design the text box to look the way I want it to. I'm not going to make a separate rectangle uh, just because we don't have to. And I want to talk about some features and some settings, uh, things that you find on the panels on the right-hand side that can make this... Uh, well, I think it'll be useful for you guys because uh, personally I didn't used to use the spacing panel. And then it turns out that it's a pretty handy thing. So I'm going to touch on that in a moment. Cool, so now that we've got this created, I've got it up against the right edge here, see that? If I have it spaced out from the edge, then once we're done, there's gonna be a gap here. If you want a gap, then good, that's how you get that gap. But I don't want a gap, I want this to stick out straight from the side of the browser, uh, so it's like borderless in a way, it bleeds off the edge. Cool, so now that I've got there, I'm, I'm just gonna style that real quick. Uh, I'm gonna go in and set the fill of this text box to be uh, I'm just going to do this arbitrary baby blue color here, uh, sort of a CMYK blue more so. And uh, now that I've got that established, I'm going to click twice to get in my text box. I'm going to highlight the text um, just so I can work with the toolbar here. And I'm going to make the text white. And I think I'm going to bump it down to 12. I'm also going to switch fonts here. Let's see, what font did I have before? I think I was using a font called Able. These are web fonts. You can go and head, you can go ahead and add your own uh, web fonts. And when I say add your own, I mean there there is a selection of over a thousand web fonts to choose from. You add the ones that you want to use when you go to add web fonts. You don't have to go and find them on your own. It's going to pop up with a dialog box where you can add them. Uh, if you guys want to use the same font, I'm going to use Able. Perfect. And now that I have that font selected, you'll see that it's in the top left corner of the box, as you would expect. It's a text box. Uh, 
Now the reason for that is because text box read like paragraph text, but in this case I want to kind of center it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the spacing panel here. And if you guys don't see the spacing panel, you can go to window and you can turn on the spacing panel. It's right here. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to bump up the padding. Padding is the space between a box, in this case a text box, and the content that's inside it. So uh, six pixels of padding pushes down six pixels, pushes to the right six pixels, pushes around every side six pixels. So now that I've got that pushed in, that, that should be enough. We can preview it in the browser. We can actually go and preview this in the browser, but uh, I don't want to do that just yet because the magic hasn't happened yet. Uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. Let's preview this in the browser before the magic happens. So when this opens up in the browser, it is where I put it. It's all the way down here, which is not where it's going to belong. And see that gap there? That gap is there because I haven't told it yet that I want it to be pinned. And it's at the bottom because I haven't told it yet that I want it to be pinned. It just thinks it's a regular element on the page, just like every other element on the page. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to Muse, and let's get this part out of the way. With this selected, this text box, this object selected, I'm going to go up to the toolbar and it says pin. And there are these different corners here that I have to choose from. I'm going to choose bottom right. And what that means is wherever the browser goes, this is going to stay in the same position relative to the bottom and relative to the right. However the user scales their browser, however they, whatever they, whatever they do, we're going to see this locked in place in a position relative from here to here and relative from here to here which means it's going to be against the right edge and meaning it's going to be this far from the bottom so th this little gap here the footer in this case represents the size of the gap I could go down further I mean I could I could lock it to the very the very very bottom edge uh, but I don't want to do that I want a little bit of space so it's kinda in the middle uh, so that way it's a little bit more prominent so now that I've got that there and I've got it pinned to the bottom right because it's in the bottom right uh, I'm gonna preview it in the browser again and there you have it. The space from the right edge is none, and the space from the bottom is equal to uh, the, the visual space that I saw in Muse from the very, very bottom of the page. So one thing you'll notice, though, is when I scoot up, uh, see how it's covered? It's covered up by that slideshow. That's something you'll find with this theme. This usually doesn't happen to you if you're building something on your own because you're managing your own layers. Uh, but the reason that that happened is because there are layers to this document, and uh, this is on a layer on top of of this. That's kind of a problem. Now I could click with uh, two fingers or right click if you're on a PC. I'm on a Mac laptop here. So a two finger click allows me to go to move to layer and I can switch layers on the fly. Now I could put it on the topmost layer and then move it to the to the top of the elements on that topmost layer or I can give it its own layer. If I have floating elements that float on top of everything I usually like to give those their own layer uh, you can even call that layer top if you just want to remember that the things that go on the la that layer are on top of everything else. Uh, so for those of you who haven't worked with layers before, let's just touch on that real quick. I'm going to go to my layers panel. If you don't see a layers panel, again, you can get to it from window at the top of the screen. And we can hit this little, uh, it looks like a sticky note, this little button here to create a new layer. And I can double click to change the name of that layer. Uh, I'm going to call it top. I'm going to do all caps so it stands out. And now when I go, it's a coincidence that this button also says top. That's not what I mean by top. Uh, this is top because it's the top layer. And you can drag to rearrange these too. So if, you're, if your top layer is named top, <coughs> pardon me, if your top layer is named top but it's not actually on the top, then you're going to have to drag it up to the top of the layers list. The fact that this is up here means that it acts that way. So now I want to click on this element. I'm going to do my two finger click or right click if you're, if you're on a desktop computer. Uh, or a PC and I'm gonna choose move to layer and I'm gonna put it on that layer which I call top now the fact that it's on that layer means it's above anything else that's on any other layer because top is on top but remember too if you put 10 things in the top layer those 10 things have their own order relative to one another which is why there's this little triangle that you can expand so if I expand menu there are a bunch of things on the menu layer which can be rearranged within that so just Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on your layers. You can have layers in the wrong order. You can have objects within one layer in the wrong order. So um, keep an eye out for that and make sure you have things arranged the way you want them to be arranged. Cool. So now that I've got this established, I'm also going to round these two corners here on the side. Just a little bit, maybe four pixels. Cool. That adds a little bit of polish to it. And now that I've got that, 
I'm going to preview it in the browser again, make sure my layer order is cool before I go any further. And there we go. It is. It's staying completely on top. So good. It looks like it needs to be moved in just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this. And on spacing, I'm going to go up to maybe eight pixels of padding. And then I'm going to unlock all of these and add a little bit extra on the left because I don't want it to be, I want it to kind of almost be centered. And I could center the text in the box. That's another way to do it. I, if I want it to be centered, I could just center it. But this allows me to drag it out a little further and have a nice amount of spacing on the left uh, and still keep the text left justified. So just know that you can unlock the padding if you want different values in each of the separate boxes. That's what that little lock link, uh, it's like a chain link in the middle there. So you can click on that to have more freedom. So I'm going to preview that in the browser again, make sure it looks good because sometimes spacing changes uh, when you preview in the browser and it looks good. looks like the spacing is all even and uh, our button just doesn't do anything yet. It also appears from the very top. And why would you want to go to the top if you're already at the top? So that is coming next. Now that we've got our button all styled, let's now make it disappear and appear when we need it to appear. So this is pretty cool. If, if you haven't played with the uh, scroll effects in Adobe Muse, this will be news to you. Uh, but this is a really useful set of features. We're going to use one of four scroll effects by going to the scroll effects panel. There are four different ways to use scroll effects. The first of which is the most popular, and that's scroll motion. Having things move at different speeds and making the page look more three-dimensional. Uh, we also have opacity, which is what we're going to use right now. And then after that, you can control a slideshow or you can control an animation created in another application called Adobe Edge Animate. And you can have that animation move as you scroll. So we're just going to stick with opacity. This is very simple. I'm going to turn on opacity with a little checkbox. And I'm going to say for the middle box here, this is called the key position. This is the most important box here. This is when does the change finish happening. So in this case, the change is going from being invisible to being visible. When is it visible? When is that done happening? I'm going to say after we've scrolled about 600 pixels down and I'll hit return and you'll notice it automatically changes the, po the, the start position, the fade position one as they call it, uh, to 550 and fade position two, which is sort of the end of the end, uh, to 650 pixels. So it, it subtracted 50 and added 50. So it's going to go from zero to 100 and then in this case back to zero which we don't want you can ignore the bottom because we're not having it fade in and then back out again but you do have to change it to a hundred so it goes from zero to a hundred and then just stays at a hundred and you can ignore the rest of the values down here now the start position that's important because the start position determines when it begins to go from zero to a hundred percent so it's going to be at zero percent up and until 550 pixels and then it's going to begin to transition for the difference, which there's a 50 pixel difference here, and then it'll stay at 100 once it gets to 100. So in this case, 50 pixels, I think that's enough. If you want it to be more gradual, you can increase the gap between these two numbers. If this were 500 and then 600, there would be 100 pixels of scrolling that takes place as it goes from 0 to 100%. So it would be slower and more smooth. Uh, I want it to be somewhat smooth, but I don't care so much for people to scroll slowly and watch it fade in. Uh, that's not super practical. So I'll just leave it at the, fi the standard 50 pixel gap. That's cool. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to close it. And let's now preview this in the browser and make sure that it fades in okay. Part one's good. It's not there, <laughs> which we don't want it to be there. It's at 0% opacity right now. So as we scroll, once we get to around the 600 pixel mark, right about now, there we go. It starts to sc starts to fade in. Uh, it starts to fade in here, and then it's done fading in here. So it happens pretty quickly. And again, you have all the control in the world over that. Um, I just want to keep it subtle and quick and as minimal as possible. So it's doing what it is supposed to do. And as people scroll quickly, they'll just think that it appeared, and uh, that's just fine. There's no way in Adobe Muse currently to make it fade in slowly, even if someone scrolls quickly, unfortunately kind of a bummer but uh, the speed at which they scroll does determine how fast it fades in if you are an Adobe Edge animate user then you've got some other options but within Muse alone uh, our only choice is to have it fade with the scroll speed so cool now that we've got this button established we need to make it do something because right now it's just a, a lame old text box it's not actually doing anything so I'm gonna go to the top of the page and you'll see here I have this anchor called top I'm gonna delete that because uh, 
yours won't have that. That's something that you have to create. And the way to create this, there are a couple of ways to create this. One is by clicking the little anchor button at the top, which selects the anchor tool, uh, which they call the place gun, because it allows you to shoot an anchor onto the page like a gun. Um, it, the other way to get to it is just press the letter A on the keyboard, A for anchor, and then click the top edge of your page. Now the left to right position of this does not matter. As long as it's at the top, that's all that matters. And I want the top edge of my anchor to be lined up at the top edge of the page. It's the top edge of the little anchor icon that matters. That's where it's going to bring us to when we link to it. So rename this anchor. I'm going to name it top. There we go. And I'm going to go back down and I'm going to find my box here, my little text box, which is my button. And I'm going to hyperlink that to top. It's like a page, except it's a position on a page. That's what an anchor is. So now that that's hyperlinked to top, when I click on that, it's going to shoot me up to the top of the page. And it's going to do so with a smooth scroll effect. It's not just going to suddenly jump like a normal hyperlink, which is a JavaScript or jQuery feature that's built into Adobe Muse to make things look real nice. So thank you, Adobe Muse team, for thinking of that. So now that I've got this selected, just before I preview it in the browser, I'm going to click on the normal state and switch to the rollover state. And I'm going to make the fill color a little bit darker for the rollover state. And you guys might be looking at this and thinking, HSB, mine does not say HSB. And that's cool. I want the brightness slider, but I don't have a brightness slider. If you don't have HSB, if you have RGB, all you have to do is hold shift on the keyboard and then click on the colors down here. And it switches back and forth. It's a really cool trick. It, I mean, it's not the coolest trick, but once you know it, it's like, oh, wow, that easy. Hold shift and click on the colors. I like to spend most of my time in HSB mode, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. It's really easy to mix colors that way. Cool. So now that I've done that, I'll preview it in the browser again, which for those of you who aren't familiar with that, I know I've just been kind of doing it. You can go to file and you can choose to preview page in browser. I'm pressing shift command E, which is shift control E on a PC. Cool. So now that we're here, I'm going to scroll down. There it is. It has appeared. When I mouse over it, it does my darker color, just like I did on that on that uh, color window. And when I click on it, it jumps me straight to the top. So something went wrong there. Something did go wrong there. I probably didn't wait long enough for the page to load, or something went wrong with the page loading. I'm going to go back and preview it in the browser again. Here we go. Scroll down. Click on it. Oh, something weird's going on. Something really weird's going on. It's not doing my... Uh, scroll effect the way it's supposed to. And this is built into Adobe Muse, so if you guys are having this problem, it has nothing to do with something you've done wrong. Uh, this is a feature built into Adobe Muse. It looks like it's good now. For some reason, I just had to refresh the page. My computer might be having a bad day. Might be having an off day. The other thing is, uh, depending on the browser that you're using, if you've done something and previewed it in the browser, and then you go and make a change and you preview that in the browser again, and you find that the browser is not behaving itself, that something is going wrong, that it's not doing what it's supposed to do, uh, rather than just clicking on the refresh button, in certain browsers you can hold shift and click on the refresh button, and uh, it actually clears the cache and then refreshes the page. So that way uh, you can see what it looks like when it loads for the first time rather than what it looks like uh, on a computer that's already tried to load it if that makes any sense some browsers let you do it some browsers don't uh, with Safari I think you have to go and you have to manually clear out the cache which is uh, annoying but that is the nature of Safari lots of little annoyances in Safari all right guys so that is it that is the gist of it hopefully you don't have that same weird glitch that I just had with uh, with it jumping to the top instead of smoothly scrolling to the top but that's actually the first time I've ever seen that and I use Adobe Muse an awful lot so I don't think you guys will have the same problem cool all right hopefully you enjoyed this please subscribe if you haven't yet already I have more widgets coming they're coming uh, hopefully this week I've got them built and tested so you guys can test them out even more for me and let me know if there's anything you want changed. Continue to send me messages and let me know what widgets you want me to build. You guys have provided great feedback and I'm, I'm doing my best to crank out those widgets that you guys are requesting. So subscribe, stay tuned, uh, head over to Facebook, find Muse Resources on Facebook. I post uh, little updates and news and stuff like that and uh, I'll see you guys soon.